Hello and welcome. Uh, welcome to this special edition of uh, Manthan, uh, which is an initiative of Bharat Satsang. In continuation of our uh, analysis of the uh, implications of the budget and the allocations that have been made therein for the various sectors, we've completed defense, we've done agriculture, we've done healthcare, and today we uh, we are uh, here with uh, another very important subject, which is about enterprise, entrepreneurship, startups, and the impact of the budget on these areas. Uh, to discuss this uh, with us today is uh, uh, Mrs. Hema Jain. Uh, she is the CEO of uh, Crux Management Services, which she founded about 14 years back and uh, is one of the uh, best uh, talent uh, developers in the country as of now. And uh, she is also uh, the she is in the governing council of the CII and has been the youngest president of HMA. So the credentials and the performance that she has shown in the last 14 years makes her an absolutely the right personality to discuss this very intricate subject. In fact, it's not, it appears to be very simple, but it's a very intricate subject. So Hema, to start with, Welcome to the show. And uh, uh, overall, as a budget, as a budget, what, where will you rate it in a scale of ten? Well, perhaps overall, maybe about seven and a half. Seven and uh, a half. But then, from a perspective of uh, development of MSMEs, entrepreneurs, or SMEs, however we create them. Uh, I wouldn't rate it even about six, perhaps six, yeah, maybe a little more than good average. Okay. Because we have uh, long but, but what is the deficiency that brings down the rating from seven and a half overall to six for MSME? What is that deficiency you see? Uh, yeah, uh, there could be two ways of answering this question. I could just give a straight answer. Yeah. I think we should look at it from a contextual point of view. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's look at the contextual point of view or the landscape of MSMEs, not just in India, but worldwide. Uh, now, India, if it were to be a $5 trillion economy, which it promises to be in 2025, there are lots of things we all need to look at doing. Uh, the biggest sector which could contribute to this kind of impetus to an economy would, of course, be the SMEs. Uh, which could be sometimes gone as MSMEs, sometimes as entrepreneurial setups, sometimes as startups. However, we equate them all falling into that group of organizations which are startup and growing to the required levels of growth. Now, why do we look at them as very important aspects uh, other than the agricultural uh, industry contribution to the GDP as one big sector? Uh, providing about, let's say, 110 million odd jobs contributing to about 45% of our exports, 8% of the GDP. And the best thing is it's the only sector which is addressing the rural employment or so-called the rural inclusive growth we need to look at and the sustainability it could provide to the economy. With these landscape into perspective, I guess the budget uh, in fact, my co-director has also written an article which got published in the English uh, Daily, which said, do we just look at the perspective or do we look at the impact perspective? I would go one step forward and say, do we look at assessment perspective, allotment perspective, and therefore impact perspective? Okay. Now, when I say assessment, I would like to look at uh, some, somewhere before the budget, we heard a lot of people talking about expectations of SMEs or the entrepreneurs or the startups as we call them, expectations, I mean, I could expect to be on a cloud. Well, that's not what I'm defining it from. Expectations is what the industry needs to grow. What the industry feels is necessity for it as it finds a lot of impediments. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at a very live example. If I were to even register as an MSME in the NSIC portal or under NSIC, 
believe me it takes nothing less than or oh, let's say about 58 manas to even get registered under the portal now isn't it a big hurdle which we have not understood or have not paid attention to how do i do ease of doing business and that's mm -hmm. where it starts for me i guess budget on budget have done a lot allocations allotments and after that we forget the story of what happened to it what impact it created do we go back to assessment do we go back to our drawing rooms to understand was this the requirement what did we do did it happen did we give it the life cycle it required to create the impact i guess budget on budget we miss on this and therefore even after 70 years today we are talking about developing processes for sme growth so from that perspective yes it has again gone down by for its rating <laughs> uh, well, I could say we rate it higher because of the kind of allotments it has done for various growth prospects. Maybe it's higher because the women employment encouragement which it has given, hmm. it, it, it gets a positive point. Uh, the senior citizens and reducing their uh, burden of health treatment, it hmm. perhaps gets a positive point on that. But overall for the MSME growth, I, I have uh, chosen to rate it a little lower. Because I expect uh, with the Mudra Yojana having come in, with so many Make in India perspectives have been coming, uh, we have not married them all together. And we, we are still way behind to create a roadmap. So to say, where we could say, uh, India could be an example, like Germany, Japan, we study to create a model for SME growth. So we have still not married it. And may not be that budget is the only way to focus on this. But it could have been a way to say that we are serious for the MSMEs to grow in this country and we welcome their issues and concerns. So even today, if I'm talking about that NSIC portal, registration takes a long time. Forget that. Let me give you another live examples, having been into various uh, platforms other than my own company concerns, having been with CII, FAPC, HMA, or India SME, part, where I am on the boards of all these organizations. What I see is, uh, take an example when you participate in an RFP or an expression of interest. The government of India procurement policy is not adhered by most of the government organizations. So mm -hmm. has the government take cognizance of it? And I know of enough number of people who have given representation on this effect. So we have not taken cognizance of such concerns and you go allot certain funds and not take this into cognizance wouldn't really make the impact happen. Now let's look at uh, a positive aspect which we read in the last two days of having redefined MSMEs on the basis of a turnover. Yes. Very welcome point. But what I feel is 5 crores, 5 to 75 crores as small, 75 to 250 crore as medium is not very encouraging point. I guess this cap would have been at about 100, 150, 100 crores at the max. Reason being, the 100 and above com uh, crore companies can easily avail the benefits because they've been in the system and know how things work. However, the 5 crores to 15 crores would still not avail the benefit. Now, when the benefit has already been, will get availed by the largest medium companies, the smaller companies would not get this. Let's look at, I mean, the statistics speak for themselves. The complete uh, lend, uh, lead, lending which the organizations have done, the financial institutions. The MSMEs have got only to the effect of 17% of this lending. Which one speaks seven. highly about, yeah, one seven, 17%. Okay. Of the total lending which has happened in this country, which goes close to about... Uh, 126041 billions. Okay. Mm. Which does speak that they're not even to avail this facility. So as the ones who are startups, when I say startup, I define it from the point that I don't even have a turnover. So zero to five crores. Are they in a position to become the 10 to 15 crores by the allotments done? Have we developed the process for it? Hmm. It's a question mark we have to answer. All of us need to answer. Uh, perhaps this uh, because that these questions are yet to be answered.
and that's where it comes from well while i accept that uh, we can you know congratulate the government for its uh, increase of funding for national manufacturing competitiveness which has gone from 5 or 6 crores to 1000 odd crores hmm. or or complemented for the prime minister employment generation program allotment uh, which has gone from 1024 crores to 1800 crores hmm. or credit guarantee fund i think this is one of the most important area coming back to the fact that credit is the biggest concern for the hmm. smes to grow and we still believe the required uh, processes are not in place uh, in fact we are doing a study on understanding the credit rating process and its uh, importance and due importance given by the financial institutions there seems to be a gap existing in the execution process of it absolutely uh, when an uh, sme would go with its rating and request for certain availment of facility while the bank would respect this how, not I mean, the specific bank, but it is found out many a times uh, that they have uh, kind of said, "Yeah, this is okay," but we would still want, you know, uh, to do the lo- lending basis only on basis of your turnover. Now, if I'm a startup with a two years growth, where do I get my papers to prove my turnover? Or where do I have my financial ratios? Where do I have my accounting processes in place? And this is all what is still required even today. I'm not saying don't measure the risk, mm-hmm. but there has to be certain other parameters which mm-hmm. have to be developed within the system to avail of it. Uh, let's look at MSMEs from the perspective of the Khadi Gram Gram Dio, which is a big, big industry, especially in the rural area. The allotment to it has gone up almost by. Two hundred percent from two sixty-five crores to four hundred fifteen crores, appreciable. The point is, are we making the it impactful? So when you distribute it among a few lakhs, it will be so minuscule that the impact wouldn't happen. So are we able to get to an equation where we say this has been distributed among X number of people, therefore the growth should have been X plus for these number of people? And before the next budget comes in, do we analyze it and say this was a gap? And I think this was just not 415 crore. There was a huge potential in this. It should have been 900 crores going forward. Yeah. So I guess that is where the gap exists. Though the government has uh, allotted, the budget has allotted funds for all possible schemes, almost by double the amount in every area. Yeah. Appreciated that the tax rates have come down. Mm. you know from 30% to 35% most welcome area but mm. then have you ever realized that this is only for companies they are not for partnership firms and proprietaries now where do smes fall mm. you could closely say about 45% of our smes fall in this bracket so have we addressed that concern mm. this is is a question mark we all need to answer So I guess these are points which uh, while we discuss will come more uh, with clarity. Yeah. So uh, from what comes out from what you've uh, said till now, it appears that there is a lack of scientific uh, allotment and a metrics-driven target achievement in terms of results. Uh, so long as it is taxation and revenue for the government there is a measurement and an achievement target to be uh, defined but when it comes to let's say uh, we will be having uh, x amount of uh, x number of companies which will uh, overcome the threshold of 50 crores or 100 crores or 150 crores that kind of targeted deployment of not only budgetary funds but also efforts a targeted deployment of efforts that is not seen in the policy is that what you are trying to say uh yes yes just just to uh, you know kind of back up with another uh, live practical happening uh, let's uh, look at what skills does one require when one does a startup hmm a mba from an institute would not help me practical exposure required 
for a startup organization. So where is a process where a startup organization would be able to understand the nitty-gritties of doing a business and overcoming the hurdles. Uh, we've done a project, in fact, my own company has done a project in the state of Madhya Pradesh, where we understood the lack of specific skills required for a startup. The skills required at different levels vary. And even in any big organizations, when a startup, you require more skills to put things into order. But when you go to become a three or four year old company, you require skills, let's say, for more of human management, human resources management. You require skills more for developing your IT backbones. You require skills for more for looking at what do you do to strategize your five year growth. Perhaps this is not a skill when you start. Now we have not differentiated this skill requirement at each level of a startup yeah. or a life cycle of an organization. Hmm. And we say we are going to skill India. Right? If you have not done this, or if you're going to, for example, let's say I'm saying from a Mudra Yojana, I'm ready to give you a loan. Okay. And I would create, employ you as an entrepreneur would create employment opportunities. The question here comes to mind is, are you giving a loan to a person who is an entrepreneur by desire? And the second question which comes to my mind is, have you done his assessment on his strengths and weaknesses to be an entrepreneur? Would you not want to understand the fund you have given apart from the ecosystem? Would the individual strength help it become a success or finally go become a NP? Hmm. So have we done that strength analysis even of individuals? Hmm. And I would start from there because it is these individuals who are perhaps adding to the whole cycle of non-performance. If you know of the mortality rate of India, in the case of MSMEs, the startups, mm. is as high as 90%. Mm. Now, are we addressing this to be said that there is a mechanism being developed to reduce this mortality rate? Fine, you've given me certain amount of, uh, let's say funding, which again, I would come back to say that it is not easy. Uh, mm. We have been talking about non-collateral based funding being easy. Uh, mm. Fact of matter is, it is not even today, uh, which would, you know, kind of get into how do we make innovative methods of funding available, which we would, I'm sure, touch in due course. Uh, but it comes to the point that, yes, I have done a setup, but I do not know beyond it. Where do I go and what do I do? Wouldn't it make sense for me to get into the district commissionerates, give them the freedom to say, here are the 70 setups in your own commissionerate. Will you ensure they're successful five years down? And what do you want us to support? So we have just done a budget allotment without percolating it down to the root level and giving the regional levels to decide where and how this fund should be used. And how, so I think a part of it gets missed up. And we okay, doing it here. That, that Hema brings out a very important question. What you are asking is absolutely right. That whether we are doing the right evaluation of the person, the company, the process, uh, whether we are empowering the administrative machinery to uh, actually supervise and guide and mentor the uh, startups to a uh, desired objective. The question that comes up is that do we really have in our administrative machinery and elsewhere the skill to do all this? I mean, one is killing of the entrepreneur the, or the startups, but the other part is whether the people who are the so-called bureaucrats and the administrators and others who are in the system, including bankers, do they have the skill of doing that assessment, that evaluation? Or are we lacking somewhere there? Or, or should we be allotting some amount of effort and money towards that? Well, I could say that we are in the evolutionary cycle of these growths and there are enough and ways of developing tools for this. I'm not saying it should be purely a human judgmental mm. or I'm not saying it should be purely a machine judgmental. 
it could mm. be a combination of things because india is too diversified to get into a uh, total machinery judgment right let's take a region uh, which has let's say for example the rice paddy growth and the husk of paddy right the husk of paddy uh, i know of regions in bihar which have you reused it for you know a generation of electricity Hmm. now it's a specific requirement of a specific location of a specific region which perhaps needs to be mapped in a way that it says this is the industry which needs to be promoted here while the caution should be that this can be only let's say about 75 units not 175 units and you know you create a competition which cannot survive and that's another big mistakes we all are doing for example in a small all village of two create 150 tailors hmm. now it's a question of will this 150 tailors are required in that village not so how will they sustain themselves now do did we provide the linkages to the, these tailors to be able to provide services to the nearby villages and towns or to the cities now that linkage is getting missed out now so i'm saying from that perspective you've created skill labor of let's hmm. say 300 tailors in a location have you given them a gainful employment or have you created an entrepreneurship which can sustain by not creating too much competition so right. that aspects of mapping at regional levels should be developed to ensure the success is uh, you know accelerated i'm not saying we're not successful i think we should thank we should salute all the entrepreneurs for you know being successful despite all this yeah the question is how do we accelerate it to where we want to be in 2025 hmm. so in that sense do you think this budget actually furthers the uh, objective and, and and actually will be a helping tool for achieving where we want to be in 2025 or there was something more that could have been done to make it more effectively reaching the targets yeah uh, to start uh, to look at it i guess the i mean everybody does say about it the finance minister was walking a very tight rope uh, with the elections in mind in the next uh, couple of years and i would also go ahead because if you are not uh, there in the next election this whole dream which you're developing now would not have been would not be successful so let's say yes you have to you know mix and match both of them having said that there were a few ways things which could have been addressed so let, let's take uh, fintech companies which could provide better our present banking or financial institution systems are not geared for being flexible to provide lending or financing facilities or services to the msmes for the inherent organization setup it's not individuals it's not you know uh, it's like i would perhaps uh, service i mean if i were a banker i would perhaps service somebody who's want 50 crores everything being in order then service somebody who wants you know uh, 10 10 55 crore rupee because it's administrative process to take right from uh, starting the organization to provide the loan to the end of closing it as non npa right the administrative cost being so big i make a choice to be uh, looking at my performance so seeing that part the fintech companies could have been encouraged to a much larger extent uh, we could have developed certain funding system for it we could have developed certain ways to encourage organizations to become a uh, fintech companies now mm. i guess a little has been done but a lot more could have been done in that area or we did not create a system wherein we said uh, mudra would provide loans were three times what we did as of last year mm. but for us to understand mudra to be successful have we done a policy which can drive a success for this mm. uh, maybe the budget should not have would not have been in a position to put it forth but the back end of it should have done that bit of saying mudra is developing a process to see how best the entrepreneurs can be helped to be successful it's like a mother has given birth to a child the mother has to 
has to make sure the child learns to walk mm. the child learns to stand on itself mm. and after some time the mother doesn't stand next to the child and the child learns to walk because the mother believes the child has built a strength to walk on itself that's exactly where i said a 100 crore company doesn't need a support or a funding with the government is trying to provide for it because it is walked quite a long journey and if it has become a 100 crore company with the journey it has had should it not be given to the others who have not got the scope because we have limited so with that in mind uh, i go back to always the mother who says i will make sure my child walks i'll support them there but when my child learns to walk on his own i wish he walks on it down though i'm there so the banking sector the government the funding all the sectors can be there or uh, like yes government has done a good job by you know giving the money tdd extension for the gst registered msmes for the clearing of their loans uh, for whatever uh, areas of concern which had come post gst so you've given that support and that is a quick reaction to what's happening in the market hmm. so you're there we all know you're there so you should be there all the stakeholders should participate together in the ecosystem but i don't need to hold the hand all the while when you walk us certain journey so i think i come from that perspective that what does the support you would have given if i were a five crore company or a one year old company this should be maybe a seven time more than i give it to a 50 crore company or a 100 crore company now have you defined these kind of matrices to ensure success is built in from the day i start up mm-hmm. i guess we missing on that perspective and i don't blame it to the budget i don't say budget should have done it i am looking at from a bigger perspective of success of msme and budget could have been one such statement which said that these five background works are being done or needs to be done I get. I I come from that perspective. When the budget says we have allotted six thousand crores for this, however, eighty percent of it needs to be used in rural areas with organizations of less than five years of existence. I am coming from that perspective. Right. Now, uh, coming to the other side of it, I mean, uh, what do you think would be the impact of this turnover-based? Uh, uh, assessment of a company size uh, how is it likely to be misutilized by the threshold companies which are say uh, a 600 500 crore company breaking it into two pieces of 300 and 200 or 250 two of them and uh, getting all the benefits that pertain to an msme thereby depriving some more eligible msmes from really getting the benefit out of Uh, so there seems to be a gap uh, in the linkage which we are having. So I missed a few words of yours. If you could repeat them. See, uh, today uh, a company less than two fifty crores will mm-hmm. be getting the benefit of taxation and other things right. as an MSME. Now a company which is four hundred crores today, today the turnover is four hundred crores. It could simply break up mm-hmm. its Uh, activities into two parts, two companies, and could be two hundred crores each. Thereby getting benefits of MSME and depriving some more eligible MSMEs from getting it. Uh, yeah, uh, but this is not something which all MSMEs resort into doing. Uh, this <laughs> is a kind of things which do happen i mean you look at even conglomerates they do that for the benefit they should get yes okay uh, like they they go and register themselves in a state which would give them more benefits mm. so i guess this is a part of part. a business scenario a country has to go through but more, more or less until you are uh, you know a sizable amount you wouldn't want to do that so you want to achieve a sizable amount for the benefits you reap to be a sizable amount and that sizable amount could be something to a threshold of 50 to 75 crores right a bifurcation wanting to take benefits wanting to take benefits which you are not eligible for maybe a such state of affairs for example a subsidy taken by a higher middle class family on a gas cylinder correct 
it's, it's a similar thing, right? Mm. Uh, mm. And many have given it up when they were realizing that they don't mm. need yeah. to take this for the moment of the rural woman who could have caught it. So I guess this has to evolve in the economies and uh, the whole ecosystem has to develop to it. However, there will be few such fishes who would want to eat away the smaller fishes or not give chance for the smaller fishes to grow. Well, mm. well, I would say they're welcome to be in the ocean. It really wouldn't matter. What would matter to me is as a one year, two year, three year company or as an organization which has not even grown to 10 crore threshold, what extra or what more do you give me as a support? You know, again, take an example of a fish in an ocean. For example, I was a new swimmer. You agree with me, I need a lot more support uh, to learn to swim than compete with a whale which is a 250 crore company. Yeah. So Absolutely. I'm saying that bridge has not been gapped. There's no way we are able to give a solution to that. And whichever few solutions are existing, the enforcement is poor in that. So when questioned at, at various platforms, we've gone to questions the uh, policy, I wouldn't say the makers, but policy executors. For example, on MSMEs getting the MSME procurement policy benefit. Hmm. The simple answer is we don't abide by it. It's at discretion. Now, do I have as an MSME a choice to let the person have this discretion? I do not. My uh, solution to this is go to NSIC portal and request for support on it. By the time the portal wakes up or the people in the portal end wake up, you know, you have lost the time to even do the tender or an EFP or an R mm. RFP or an EOI, right? So I'm saying these have not been addressed. Uh, these needs to be become more rigorous more time driven because an MSME who's lost one year has lost one year. Okay. So we don't realize how important it is in the economy. Hmm. We do not realize that mortality of MSME is a very big damage to the economy. Yes, because you are taking a whole cycle of a growth and then suddenly getting stunned by the fact that so much of mortality is happening there. Hmm. So I'm saying it's like you can't even take me into an ICU at that point in time. The GST, the 180 days of uh, um, extension given is like taking me to an IS ICU and saying, you can still survive. Don't worry. But the way we are looking at the 10 crores and 15 crore companies, believe me, they're not even be in a position to go in ICU. You declare them as an NPA and they have no choice. So mm -hmm. I guess this is where we need to look at a support mechanism with some special criteria on it agreed there may be organizations who will you know kind of bifurcate their companies into two three four to take these benefits but not too many of them would really do it so i'm not really concerned about those few who do it but i'm more concerned about those few who would like to grow but there were murmurs in the market regarding this so that's why i thought this was now coming to the to another aspect of it uh, how do you see that this budget is a natural logical sequence of the past three, four budgets that this government has been presenting? Do you think it is a logical end of what they've been doing for the last three, four years? Uh, sorry, sir. Again, I think there's a link connection. Is this think, a budget for last? Do you think this budget is mm -hmm. a logical sequence to what the government has been doing through budgets in the last three, four years. Oh, uh, yes. I think at least that part of it, we can appreciate the government because we've seen that uh, on an, uh, I mean, let's take the national uh, com uh, manufacturing competitiveness uh, process they have started or a Make India process they have started or the SCST hubs they have started. A logical process is running on it uh, as far as it goes to allotments. Hmm. Okay, but if I may ask a question, Mark, and I think the budget speech should start henceforth from what impact has the last budget created? Hmm. I think it would change the way we see things. Hmm. I do not want to know what's your allotment first. I want to know what has happened to the allotment you've done last year. Hmm. And thereby, what is your study? Right? The budget would say we've done all this homework, but do I know what really transpired or not? I, I guess none of us know. Right. So I would st start from a perspective of, yes, it's logical. Uh, yes, they are trying to move to improve things. They're trying to put systems into place. Uh, look at the adoption of technology. Fairly 
looking good, we would, I mean, worldwide, if you look at it, saying we're in stage two of adopting technology. The stage one of technology is a basic stage where, you know, you have the computers, the LAN systems and all. But the stage two is where you start moving towards enterprising module of technology, right? So yeah. I think people have started adopting that thanks to the funding and thanks to the uh, certain facilities being provided by the government or the budget allocations. But have we moved from stage to the stage three quickly enough? It's a big question mark. And what do we do to be there? Now the stage three, the GST, and if I were to get into the GST process of uh, even filing my returns or doing the GST process, I need to be the stage three of technology. Right. And as I said, most of our MSMEs are in the stage one of technology. And therefore they find it very difficult to really adopt to the TGST process. Absolutely. It, it, is, it, it, it requires maybe a, you know, a guy who knows computers and a guy who's an expert in computers and who knows the programming or technology. And then the combination of all this to be on a GST portal and be friendly to it. Mm. Now I'm saying, I don't want to be there. I want to be two ways ahead. So did I know that I missed that two things, which was get to become an enterprise management MSME. I missed that stage and I have been asked to go to GAF 5 without even getting into GAF 3, yeah. which is a GST model. So I have missed that point of growth in the ecosystem. So there we have failed. We failed, we failed miserably and all of us have failed. Let's, let's accept it even as citizens or, you know, uh, me as a person who goes as a spokesperson for the MSMEs or people who are in various associations and platforms who speak for MSMEs. Did we advocate this change? Did we make sure that we move towards this change as a question mark for all of us to answer? And I hope we realize that even today when the MSMEs are cribbing about, we cannot do the GST process of uh, payments. Basically, they've not understood that they're not on an enterprise form way of managing their accounts and finances. So if you're with a LAN and a two computers and you know using a basic software to manage your finances, perhaps it's looking like a Herculean process, <laughs> which is not what it is. Mm. If you realized or if you were told you need to go into the enterprise management. <laughs> Government and organizations and associations and other stakeholders have done enough and more to say, get on to the cloud platform of managing your processes and systems. But the MSMEs still have their question marks on this. Mm -hmm. Believe me, to go and ask 100 MSMEs on the cloud platform, 75% of them will say, Are you mujhe pata nahi, mera se data secure hai. Yeah, that is true. I, I, I completely you agree. Can't work on it. You can't work on it. And in fact, it's not about just an MSME. Even a large enterprise, I have I do not think would be wanting to put their data in the cloud. They would be far preferring to spend a little more and have an in-house implementation of the software because your entire competitive edge can be snatched away by just one leak of data, which which is the basis of all the business. That so we come to two points here. It is can be. None of us know whether it really is the case. So hey, it can have be. we done enough to address that issue? Can be. Second, what are the alternative solutions to this? Because obviously the way the government is looking to going ahead on the Aadhaar, the unique numbers for the MSMEs, the NSIC portals, the GST portals, all these are done for ease of business appreciated but if i am myself a simple computer based organization how will i marry all this together to synergize my business to grow okay. so we have not addressed this uh, it's like basically i've not even learned to walk and you are requesting me to participate in a marathon mm. so have you enabled me to get into a marathon mm. and even if you have enabled maybe it's not spoken in bold letters Maybe it's not spoken in court, uncourt, saying this is available for you. Please make use of it and get into running a marathon. Otherwise, you're missing something. And you will never be able to join us in the marathon otherwise. Because uh, we cannot be having a sprint running where the second person or the third person is very slow. And therefore, the fourth person never got his chance. So nobody's going to pull the fourth person ahead. 
right? And business is pretty competitive. I mean, I would be happy like, okay, you're way behind, you stay back because I'm not going to help you grow. I need to run, right? So okay. in that scenario, I guess we need to develop that ecosystem. My uh, whole perspective is to looking from success of MSMEs. Yeah. Rather than giving them, I mean, it's like you're giving me some breathers at every point in time. Or if mm-hmm. I am having a decay, wound, you're giving me a, a healing position there. But I would look at how do I ensure the person can participate in a marathon. Hmm. So, uh, while there have been good points in the budget and there are a lot, lot many things that, that maybe may have been left uh, out of it, uh, overall, where do you see the MSME sector going in the next one year? Irrespect- and, and how do you see the budget of the next year, irrespective of which dispensation is in power at that time? Okay. Uh, as far as it goes to the MSME, I've been an entrepreneur myself, and I have full faith in the entrepreneurs of this country. They would come what may, be successful, add to the growth. And last four or five years where everybody were having shaking legs to grow, MSMEs have stood the test of time. They have grown. And I guess they will. There is no doubt about it. I only was looking at accelerating this growth. Okay. Get them into the fifth gear. And this is time we do that. The next budget is perhaps not uh, something we can comment about because we're not going to have a full budget next year. Uh, mm. So it's too early to comment about it until we really know how the election and the declaration of all that happens. But I would be happy if certain aspects of uh, the requirements of MSMEs get addressed, like, you know, as I said, the fintech companies, uh, support for good incubation centers, uh, special economic zones for startups. Okay, mm. a complete decentralization of policy matters on using of funds. At the same time, develop a metrics where you have a performance-driven funding allocation. And if there is a story of not being successful, do we know why it had happened? I, I would look at these kind of change in spirit to be adopted, change in execution process to be adopted. And the earlier we do this, for example, let's take a single window system. We still do not have a single window system for MSMEs, Absolutely. wherein I can speak about saying my pain has reduced. I can, I have a problem. Let's say as an MSME, I have a problem on managing my manpower. And I have no clue why I'm not able to manage. Uh, MSME, like for example, if example I can say suffers from a huge absenteeism. Hmm. It's a factor of motivation. Mm. Neither does the MSME know it's a factor of motivation, nor does he know how to come out of it. Now, the absenteeism leads to a huge productivity and more issues. And that's a cycle. Now, where do I go? So there is no process of, let's say, I provide a mentoring process. I provide a process wherein uh, there is a particular day in the commissionerate of, at the district level where you have certain experts who could help you with the mentoring and coaching process to ensure you're successful. Now, I would want funding to be set up for such kind of processes where a seriousness gets developed into hand-holding an MSME to overcome these obstacles. Believe me, I've spoken to enough and more number of MSMEs who would point out that they do not know where the problem areas are. Yeah. And how do I make my organization set up, become successful? So maybe he cannot write a report of a 50 crore and a 75 crore company and hire an expert banker or an expert CA to write a report. But this MSME has no clue also of what's happening in his own organization and how does he study, where are the areas of concern and what is the solution and how does he implement it. Take an example of a tailoring unit which has let's say about 40, 50 tailors. Most of them I have seen complaining, stating, stating, we have a problem, the way we, day we pay salaries, these people do not come for next one week. <laughs> All right. So where's the solution? 
you can do a scan across the country and all tailoring units would be having this concern. I am shocked and surprised till today nobody found a way out of this, of telling the owners of which are the way. One example could be do staggered payment. Second example is get your tailors to understand the concept of professionalism and develop that spirit in them. Third question is make them understand not keeping up promises would mean that you lose loyal customers. And the fact that we all do not grow out of the clutches where we are. Now there have been no success from set up anywhere around us. Okay. So we have gone to the e-commerce and e-businesses. We have gone to go and make it easy for a grocery man to deliver your grocery, which is, you know, a kind of uh, an order placed on an online web portal. Very welcome step forward. Because you're kind of making the whole ecosystem environment friendly. Everybody's not running to a supermarket or a grocery with this car and, you know, adding to the pollution. Mm. And the roads get a little freer. But have you addressed this kind of a concern? Which majority of SMEs, which are less than five years, are suffering from. So they would never reach your 10 crore and 15 crore turnover. Wherein the, the amount of effort or the amount of support required from government itself comes down. The moment I'm a 50 crore company, I wouldn't want to keep going to the government for support. I would rather concentrate on my business. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a simple cycle of growth. Mm. So I would look at it from these perspectives, wherein at a regional level, at a panchayat level, if need be, and rural growth is the most important growth for all of us. And if we need to provide employment to the numbers we are looking at, I think it would happen there. We need to understand that rural economy cannot be grown just by creating hundreds of the same organization because the competition itself would make sure each one of us is killed. So there needs to be a healthy competition, but it cannot be over competitive because the market. So diversification, is diversification, diversification yes, understanding the market needs, uh, yes. creating it as per the need base and mm. ensuring it's not over flooding the markets. Mm. I think this is where the local governance will play a role. Mm. And I don't think any of our budget is addressing these kind of concerns. So I guess it should come from there. And I'm sure if the next budget need not be a populist budget or a budget which needs to, you know, kind of uh, be ensuring that we win our elections or any such aspects, it should address this because I'm sure many people have become vocal about these concerns. Mm. Uh, and, and MSMEs, especially the micro small enterprises, not growing or seeing a too early mortality is a big, uh, I would say, drain on the economy. And we cannot let the ecosystems support us at any point in time. So it should be like a doctor whom I visit, uh, not for being unwell for too long, but telling him, I don't want to come and see you again. Because you're a good doctor, so you've treated me of my ailments. And I don't want to see you again. And a doctor should be one who would say, I as well do not want to see a patient repeatedly coming to me. And I think we're missing that out. We repeatedly want to go back to the government for support. So you need to get me yeah. to a level where I don't need to go back for support. And yeah, how does okay, that Hima, uh, See, uh, given that this is a high mortality area of economy, uh, I think we would be revisiting uh, the area of MSME, looking at it from other perspectives, a 360 degrees analysis, and to possibly trying to find some solutions over a uh, over the next two, three months, we'll be doing more programs and would definitely expect your inputs for that. And thanks for having joined us and if, uh, out of your very, very busy schedule. And uh, I hope we keep interacting in future. Thank you. Uh, surely, sir. Thanks for inviting me. And I hope this points reach to the res uh, to the required stakeholders. Yeah, I'm sure. It was sure. nice discussing on this area. Sure. Thank you. Thank you.